Hello and welcome to On The Other Hoof, our second Cheltenham Festival preview. Um, one short at the moment, he's literally just left and we don't know where he's gone. So for now, we're joined by Michael Andrews, Carla Medell and my name's Luke Alder. Thank you for coming for joining us today. Um, Adam Webb will be here hopefully at some point and today we are going to be previewing the Ryanair Chase firstly and then secondly the Champion Chase, although I would forgive you for thinking that they're exactly the same race. Um, We'll start off with the question uh, from the major. Uh, we don't, I don't know his name, but uh, Tim Larden. Tim, yeah. Tim, yeah. Says it on his bio, I think. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, firstly, is it unfair to call the Ryanair the bra uh, bridesmaid group one or grade one, sorry? And um, is it a potential risky bet with so many uncertain runs in there? Um, have your thoughts. Um, so the second part, 100% yes. I mean, looking at both the Champion Chase field and the Ryanair field, and also the Gold Cup field, many of the horses in that market, you don't know where they're going to go and what race will suit them the best. So at the moment, I don't think it's, it's a, a market that you can have a significant bet on, but it is a race that could fall apart, and you could find yourself on a good bet if you find the right one. Um, what was the first part of the question? Uh, the first part is, is it unfair to call the Ryanair the bridesmaid grade one? Um, Obviously now it's a grade one. Well, it is. It is comp in comparison to the champion chase and the, and the gold cup. But it's still a pretty good race. And I think it is a shame horses such as Q-Card are not going for the Ryanair when it is a grade one. It is at the Cheltenham Festival. And they should be going for the race that suits them the most. And for me, the Ryanair suits him a lot better than anything else. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. Um, do you also think them same uh, thoughts, Michael? I don't know what. I yeah, I can't disagree with that. Really, I completely agree. I've, I'd love Q Card to uh, go to the Ryanair because I think he's got it all set up for it in comparison to the rest of the field. Yeah, uh, Q Card would just have to jump, but apparently he's not going, and that leaves us with the favourite, well, joint favourites in some places, Beneficent and Alfaroff, who themselves are not certainties to run. Um, out of them two, which one would you prefer to be on, Michael? Uh, yeah, I prefer Beneficent narrowly, I think. Beneficent always seems to uh, prove himself when he needs to. Um, he seems really flexible trip-wise. He obviously could be going to the champion chase, where um, I'd be slightly more inclined to back him at the moment, as he, stay, he obviously stays further than two miles. If Sprinter Sacra was to come out on side, a favourite, nine to one at the moment, I think, on Bet365, is a very good price of beneficial on the champion case. But we're meant to be talking about the Ryanair. Um, <laughs> You're getting ahead. Like, you can just go so um, wayward with this. Um, the Ryanair, so yeah, Hidden Cyclone perhaps is interesting. He's a much bigger price than the fish. Um, but um, I do worry if the trip is slightly too far, considering um, he was just denied by Beneficent last time in Ireland. No, two, two starts ago, sorry, in Ireland. And um, he was third. He ran on really well behind John Spirit in third, but um, he did get passed by Colour Squadron on the run-in, which um, I think Colour Squadron was flying past anyway, so can't really blame him for that. But I worry if the extra furlong or so could be a problem, especially if it comes up soft ground. So it's difficult with that. Yeah, we, we, we had a few questions about um, Hayden Cyclone, actually. There's quite a lot of interest in him. Um, we've had a lot of questions tonight, actually. Um, if anyone has anything that they want to ask that we may not touch on during the show, then please tweet me at Luke Elder, at Luke Elder 13 If you're behind the show, then comment underneath. But regarding Hidden Cycling, I had a bit of interest in him, saying that if he goes, then surely he's a player. And I think you're right in saying that his stamina is the main worry. Because last time uh, at Ascot, he was second to Saida Gruji, obviously. And that was a really good run, because Saida Gruji arguably his best performance of the year, but then again, Beneficent, uh, last, well, the time before that, sorry, there was a Stewart's Inquiry, a lengthy one over it, wasn't there? But whether he should have quit that day, I'm not 100% sure. I know Rob Cook, who tweeted in, definitely thinks he should have quit it. Maybe the money was on that day. But, um, yeah, I think potential bigger dangers lie elsewhere. Um, Callum? Um, going back to... Beneficent Alpha, I'd, I'd much prefer to be on Beneficent, to be honest. Who so obviously won at the festival last year, won the uh, Juicen, now the JLT, and, and won it nicely in a first time hood. He's 
surprised again this season when he won the Grade 1 uh, the day after Boxing Day. And before that, there was a couple of excuses. Adam said he didn't look very good when he ran in at Weatherby in the, uh, in the Charlie Hall. So I think that can be excused. I think 2 mile 5 is his sort of trip. And he's a solid horse, um, a consistent horse that you know will get run in the race. And um, he <coughs> ticks a lot of boxes, but the only one he doesn't tick is value of price, I don't think. I think yeah. 5, 6 to 1 is pretty fair for a horse that isn't a world beater. And, you know, you might be getting value for money on the day if he's 5, 6 to 1, but you're certainly not getting value at the moment. Uh, Alpharoff, um, I, I, I just thought he was beat before the trip was... Any there was any question of the trip, and you know he's had his injuries. Obviously, he won the Paddy Power uh, two years ago now, and um, so the trip should be fine for him. But I thought he'd improve for the three miles, to be honest, and he hasn't. So I'd be worried that he's just not the same horse anymore, and there's no way I'd be taking the price he is. No, I agree with that completely. Um, again, other horses that we're not certain <coughs> on um, whether they'll actually come to this race or not. Uh, first lieutenant who looks. I'm going to say hesitantly uh, that it might be price-wise tonight because there is a bar of blue on Ozcheck. Our first lieutenant, we don't know if he's going to go. Q card looks certain to turn up at the Gold Cup. Dynast, we're not sure if he's going to turn up. Um, RV Collegionaire, Menorah, Module is the only one looking down. I, I can safely say I think that he should, he will go. But a first lieutenant, do you reckon Ryan is the right uh, place for him to go, Michael? Um, probably the wrong person to ask. I actually... When did, didn't he go to the Rhino last year? Yeah, um, second. And, and got beaten. Um, and I know you guys wanted him to go to the Gold Cup, so I think he may may actually take his chance in the Gold Cup. In fairness, um, but I think he's got a lot. He's got to have a lively chance in the Rhino yet again. But I think they will probably take him to the Gold Cup once more. <laughs> yeah, I, I think they should take him to the Gold Cup. No doubt about it. I don't, I'm I'm not sure he's got the speed for a Ryanair. Um, the finishing kick. You can argue last year he bumped into on a cue card, but then he wasn't really getting away from the likes of Champion Court behind him, which wouldn't really be decent enough form to win this race. Um, but then again, is there a cue card in the race? You have to say no, except for cue card himself, obviously. Um, but yeah, for me, he needs to go Gold Cup. Uh, Callum, first lieutenant. I I think it's to be honest. I'd run him in this. I don't have him ha having a chance in the Gold Cup, and I have him having more of a chance in this. So I'd run it here. I mean, he obviously second last year, beating nine lengths by Q card, and in behind. I don't think there's anything that's better that was in behind him that day. It's in this year's field. So I, I'd give him a chance. Again, he's he's shortened in price, and I don't think he's in the same form as he was last year. On Official figures, he's put he's not put a performance yet where he's gone close to what he's run to last year, and he has looked a bit ungainly at times where he's been off the bridle quite early and he's he's plugged on. Um, so again, he's one that I think has to go into the mix if he if he makes it. But again, he's not a horse I'd want to back anti post, and probably not even a back, horse I want to back on the day. Yeah, um, just looking now. It would appear the price wise has gone for Dynast. Yeah, he has, yeah. In the right there. Um, now we have to talk about Dynast. Uh, is, he, is he really, truly a great one horse, especially around Cheltenham? I don't think he is at all. Um, would you guys disagree with that? Well, I've, I, was, I backed him in the King George, and it was a stupid bet, to be honest. I really what thought that. Um, I really thought that Kempton would suit him, to be honest. Obviously, he won the Felton last year, and uh, he won at Aintree, and he was second uh, behind Beneficent in the Juicen. So that's pretty strong form. Um, and then he ran such a good race at Haydock behind Card, which is a proper speed test for a three-mile race. So you'd have to think two-and-a-half round Cheltenham, two-mile, five round Cheltenham would really suit him. But he ran such a poor race in the King George, I thought. He was beaten a long way out for me, a, a lot longer than most. I, I really thought... My bet was gone after about a mile and a half. He just didn't look like he was travelling at all. And, you know, we've seen horses from David Pipes Yard just somehow lose their form. He just reminds me so much of Grand Crew, who looked a world beater and then just tailed off. Um, so he's not one that I want to back. Um, he's not a safe bet, certainly not. I could see possibly, you know, 12 to 1 being a more preferable bet to the. Uh, to the front three who are half the price but again he's not a bad that I look at putting on 
Yeah, I. I <laughs> uh, Michael, would you even consider consider putting uh, money on Dinas now? He's about eight to one. Yeah, I can't. I can't really see. Yeah, I, I, I don't think Benef I don't think he's going to turn around the form of Beneficent um, on this year's evidence because Beneficent impressed me last time, and as he seems to do, throws in some really, really good runs and seems to know when to uh, perform. As Dinas can throw in a lot of bad ones, um, as he did obviously in the King George. So yeah, I'd still be quite happy going with Beneficent over Dinast, especially as the price of Dinast is just about to um, capitulate. Is capitulating as we speak. Uh, <laughs> eight to one looks as short as he is now. Um, <coughs> Sorry. Okay, going down a bit more, we have the likes of our vehicle legionnaire, Minora. Module had a really nice prep the other day in the game spirit when beating Dodging Bullets, but is that form going to be good enough to win the likes of Orionair? Then you've got Captain Conan, who has been dubbed by many, including myself, Tripless. Um, any of them for take your fancy at all? No. Um... <laughs> uh, Menorah, Menorah possibly, but again, he's a horse that is best at Aintree, and he's one that I think they should have a fairly light race here. And then target Aintree, Avika Ligionier, I, I, maybe he's an improved horse this year, but he's quite big on Betfair actually, which is a bit of a negative for people that want to back now. And I still just don't have him as a horse that really will enjoy a uh, a strong pace and and the. The, rust, the hustle and bustle of, of Cheltenham. He's a horse that I think just likes to plod around on heavy ground and gets his own way. Module, I don't think he's good enough. He showed he wasn't good enough in the Peterborough when he was behind Riverside Theatre and, and uh, Captain Chris. Obviously, Captain Chris has done well since, but he wasn't fit that day. Um, Riverside Theatre was had a lot of weight, but on that form, I don't see why he's going to, um, to challenge arguably better horses than Riverside Theatre uh, in this. Yeah. And Captain and Captain Conan, sorry, I think we'll go for the champion chase. Um, I think he's a proper two miler. He, di he didn't see out the uh, juice and trip last year. Uh, he's a big bit of a, a brute of a horse, and if it's going to be soft ground, I think a, a champion chase would be more of his street. Yeah, um, Michael, are you going to try to say Arvika Legionnaire in a more authentic French accent? Arvika Legionnaire. That's that's <laughs> it. Pretty much. Legionnaire. <laughs> Legionnaire. Legionnaire. I say Legionnaire. Uh, yeah, I think you can get quite stuck trying to say that. <laughs> uh, two uh, yeah, of the others, I thought module was probably of the most interesting. Um, if he stays the tr the trip, I think he's probably one of the most likely to stay because he he was staying on behind Beneficent last time in the Juicin last last year in the Juicin. Um, but I still don't think he's up to that class. Maybe he is a a place horse perhaps if uh, some of the top ones pull out. If uh, for example, Q card first lieutenant. Um, last instalment, yeah, he could, he could perhaps get a place. I wouldn't be surprised if he got placed, but not for winning purposes. Okay, um, well, now we have some nitty gritty in our selections. I've actually gone for one that we haven't spoke about yet in um, Bailey Green, who I backed at twenty to one a while back, and that price is not <coughs> at all. It's still twenty to one, but you can get fourteens. I'm just praying that Mouse Morris doesn't go to the champion chase with him because that would be completely the wrong move. But I was, I was. Happy to hear that if Sprinter Sacra goes to Cheltenham, which hopefully he does, um, Bailey Green will then go for the Ryanair. Well, more than likely go for the Ryanair anyway. Um, after his Kim Lockbray run last time behind Texas Jack, when I think he would have won if he didn't absolutely batter the last, because he was coming back at the line. Obviously, it was a decent performance anyway. Uh, last year's Stormont was in th uh, third that day, and as I said, Texas Jack won. But it was a good performance, and over a little bit further on the Cheltenham Hill, he seemed to love it last year when chasing Simon Sick home in the arc hall. I think 20 to 1 is a huge price about him. And if Mouse Morris just so happens to watch this, please take him to the Ryanair, because it's idiotic to go for the champion chase. Um, <laughs> guys, any karma selections? Go on, Michael. Uh, uh, it was really difficult. I, I did put Q card in a five-fold a couple of months ago um, when I had hoped that he'd go there, but he's going to go for the uh, Gold Cup. He's 99% sure for that. Um, I will go Beneficent, I think, actually. I think all could, could take this. Yeah, so Beneficent for Michael, right? Yeah, I, I'm on I'm on cue card anti-post at six as I backed him after he... Am I the only one is? He, he finished third at, in the Holden Gold Cup. I think you are, yeah. Um, so I'm absolutely gutted that he's not running, to be honest, because I think he'd absolutely bolt up. Um, this, from an anti-post point of view, I'm just looking at horses much further, further down uh, in the prices. There's, there's three horses that I think could potentially be 
decent enough fantasy post bets. And there's two progressive handicappers in Cloudy Two. I thought ran a really good race at the weekend. Um, I, if it's soft ground, I think he comes into consideration. And the same for Theatre Guide as well. I don't think he's actually very far off this standard. And if it's good ground, I think Humble has a huge chance because again he ran a really good race um, at the weekend. Say. Yeah, yeah, and. Um, I backed him last year for the race actually, and he went for the handicap. Um, but off one, he's you know I think he's a 160 horse. He can definitely run to a 160 mark off, off good ground at a trip that is absolutely ideal. So 33 to one, uh, I think he's 33s, um, is more my kind of bet in this race. Yeah, um, Humpel is 33, 40 to one best price. So yeah. I was literally just looking looking down the one, and he was the one that caught my eye, especially after his run this weekend. So yeah, he's yeah. actually quite an interesting one. Um, with uh, with Q Car coming out in a few, I think you know the class of the Ryanair could just slightly drop to his his level. He's more likely to run the most, and he's also quite strong on Betfair. Just noted, he's actually one of the only horses of the outsiders that are a lower price or a similar price on Betfair than the, what they are with the uh, with the bookies. That's a fair shout with Humble. He ran a brilliant race in the um, with the Ascot Chase at the weekend. But, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. I, I, I somewhat agree with that. Um, <laughs> now going on to the Champion Chase, which all oh, oh actually we should say um Adam's selection, which was sizing Europe, isn't it? Oh yeah, Adam was here, yeah. wasn't he? Adam, I don't think Adam's coming back, guys. I don't think. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Oh, I forgot about the other guy that's usually... <laughs> <laughs> that's how loved Adam is. <laughs> um, Adam likes sizing Europe, but again, it's another one. He may not go for it, but Bailey Green will beat him anyway. So. Um, yeah, bold. Um, right, the champion chase revolves pretty much around one horse's participation in this, and we've only seen him once this year when he bitterly disappointed at Kempton. There's no way around it, and that is... The enigmatic Sprinter Sacra. Um, Michael, lead us off with Sprinter Sacra. Yeah, um, it's been a very bizarre year. We haven't really been told enough about it to really be able to uh, judge. Um, he's he's meant to be having a run before. I'm not quite sure when and where that's happening, especially it's, with the ground. It's just um, a race course gallop. At Kemp. It's a race course gallop, okay. Um, so, yeah, I think if I personally think if he turns up, he does win. I I don't think Sider Grouchy does like Cheltenham, but saying that if Sprinter Sacra is the Sprinter Sacra we know, Sider Grouchy has got to be a real big challenger. Um, of the others, they're not Sprinter Sacra standard. Even a Sprinter Sacra slightly below par, um, beneficent again. <laughs> nine to one is decent, uh, especially if um, Sprinter Sacra comes out nine to one. You won't get that on the day if Sprinter Sacra isn't around. Um, looking looking down the down the list, none of the others really stand out for me. I have to admit. So yeah, I I hope Sprinter Sacra turns up, thrills us all, and um, that's pretty much it. I, there's nothing that really interests me below. Other than Sprinter him. Sacra, it's not a race that can really get you excited, is it? No. Right. Yeah. Um, Callum, do we think that Sprinter Sacra will turn up? That is a very, very tough question to answer. Um, I never, so I, like... <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, obviously we haven't seen him since uh, since Kempton uh, after the day after Boxing Day, and you know he had the heart problems. Uh, I assume we'll see him at, with a race course gallop, like you said. If we do, then there's no reason why he shouldn't be turning up. Um, you know, it, it's quite a serious thing to come about, and. We, we shouldn't get onto all the politics of it all because I, I do feel quite strongly about um, how it was dealt with and uh, I think there's a lot more to it than we know. But, um, I mean, if he turns off, he wins. Sim simple as. And I know Saido Grigi's improved massively this season and uh, has been a very, very good horse winning notable group ones, a uh, great one, sorry, I'm in flat mode, um, throughout the season. And... Um, <laughs> um, but Sprinter Saka <laughs> wins. He's one of the best horses we've seen for many, many a year, and it would just be nice to see him back, to be honest. Yeah, it would. Um, that leaves us with either a betting without Sprinter Sack uh, selection or an each way one, and I'm really struggling to find an each way one. Am I allowed to tip the same horse in both races? 
Yeah, me too. Because <laughs> <laughs> Bailey Green would have an each way chance, but he, he shouldn't be here. Um, price wise has gone for Alderwood, which I struggled to see, if I'm perfectly honest. Um, Module is one that could potentially run into a place. Obviously, we know he stays a little bit further than this and ran a brilliant race in the game spirit, as I previously mentioned. Special with Yara, if it came up fast. There's so many that you could give a each way week to, but nothing you could say confidently, yeah, that is nailed on for a place. What well, that's at a price anyway. Um, either of you got an each way fancy? Yeah, there's the, the, there's two that I, I would think about, but more on the day, not certainly not anti post. I like I said earlier, I think Captain Conan will run, and I think he's one of the better two milers out there. To be honest, I know. A softer ground would suit, but he goes fine on good ground. Um, it's just a shame we haven't seen him since uh, since the Tingle Creek. And I know they've had a few problems with him since, but if he makes the race, um, then and and the front two make it, then I think he's booked for third. And I know you didn't weren't keen on Alderwood Luke, but I can see I can see the angle from it. You know, he's a two-time festival winning uh, horse, winning the Grand Annual on the County Hurdle. He definitely runs in the race. Um, he goes on any sort of ground. He's a lot more solid than most of them in the race um, at twenty to one. I'm not saying I fancy him for for the race, and I don't think he's good enough. But he's a much more solid bet at twenty to one than the majority of the horses that either won't make it or aren't even as good as him. So yeah, it's 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 him and, and Captain Conan for me. I think are the ones to look at if you want an each way horse. Yeah, um, Michael. Uh, I was just looking perhaps at wishful thinking, although I think he does need further now. Um, he did run into he will run third out of seven in the in last year's champion chase. Um, I think he'll he'll need if it's soft and it's run quite quickly, he could um, catch up with a few. But if there's less than eight runners, I I just I don't think he'll be in the first two, especially if just that ground side of Gruji both turn up. Um, but wishful thinking is about twenty to one perhaps. If there's uh, eight runners, I think he could get third. Yeah, um, oh, I'm really struggling to get away from Bailey Green as an each way bet. You do it. Thing. So I, I, I hate myself for it, but I'm gonna have to tip the same horse in each race. That's disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> I can't have anything else. Like Module will be the only one that <clears throat> that sort of even remotely tempts me. But then you have to say with dodging bullets, I don't fancy him at all in the Arkle, so <laughs> that form might not be worth a great deal. Ah, oh, it's it's just such a tough race. We'd love to know what you fancy though, and hopefully you're more productive than me on this. Um, but send us your fancies in, and we are going to have a look at some questions now. Um, and we've got a buttload of them. I think is the correct term for it. Um, oh, one second. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> going down now. Right. Uh, Hidden Cycle, we've already given our um, thoughts on that one. Um, Maddie P has said, what do you think of First Lieutenant and Ryanair? Uh, she thinks it's his race and will give him the best winning chance. Alan agreed with her on that. Yeah, it, I, I said it. it's his best chance, yeah. mainly because I don't have it, give him have a chance in the Gold Cup, but has he shown enough, that, has he shown the same form as he did last year? Um, can he match that second? I think if he ran to that second last year, I think he probably wins. But he hasn't shown that form for me. No, I I, I don't think he's a running horse at all. I I just don't think he's fast enough to uh, for the finish. Like if you look at it last year, okay, it was cute kind of front. You have to take that into account. But turning for home, he was being pushed along and throughout the race, he maybe didn't travel the best, but. I just can't have him in a Ryan whatsoever. Maybe an each way bet, but not for me. Um, Dan Kelly has also uh, got in touch. Is Bryn Stacker a lay at evens? Uh, surely will only drift between now and the day. Whatever he does on a gallop and uh, the chances that he that he doesn't make it. Um, I'm probably not the best guy to uh, ask this to. And I don't think Michael is either because I'm not a huge layer of horses. Um, if I was, I don't think I'd be laying a horse like Sprint Sacra because he could turn up and make you look like an absolute moron on the day. Um, Callum, would you consider laying Sprint to Sacra? No, I, I, I don't think I would. And actually, from a sentimental point of view, I wouldn't want to because I would love to see him back and yeah. back to his best. And I know 
taking out the betting hat up, uh, out the window. That, that's that's the main thing, you know. We are interested in the sport because we love horse racing and we love our horses. You know, it's not all about betting at times, and we do like to have a bet. But to see Sprinter Sacro back to his best would, would make the festival for me. Yeah, um, I'm fairly sure. That's perfectly summed it up. <laughs> I was yeah. going to come to Michael, but I'm pretty sure he'd just say that in a higher pitched voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> As previously mentioned, uh, Rob Cook gives Hidden Cyclone an each way squeak. Uh, we're just a bit worried a little bit about his uh, staying ability in in a top class race like this. Obviously, the Paddy Power he ran a decent race in, but this is a whole different level from that. Um, Richie O'Shea has said, uh, "Will Sizing Europe or Dynast win the Ryanair? No. Uh, should the others turn up? Yes." Um, Dinas, I, I'd rather be on Sizing Europe over Dynast if if they both turned up. I, I personally, I just can't have Dynast as a true Grade One horse. Um, I, I'm happy to be proved wrong, but Dynast is just never a horse I could really get with. Um, Michael, out of them two, who would you rather be on? Sprint Sacra or Sizing Europe or Dynast? Oh, um, ooh. Uh... In the uh, I don't know. In the right, in the Ryanair, I, I don't know. I think I. Oh, that's difficult actually. Sizing Europe, I'd love him to come back to his best. So yeah, I'll go sizing Europe, especially at the prices. Yeah. Um, Callum. Um, what horses are this? Sizing Europe, I didn't ask for the Ryanair. Yeah, it's nice to know, um, this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really fancy either, to be honest. Uh, I don't. I'm not. I'm not convinced by Dinas to be honest. I mean, he was beaten behind Beneficent in the Deuce, and I don't see why he's going to overturn that form on any ground. Um, I don't think he's improved sufficiently this season. Um, and Sizing Europe is a solid horse. Um, he just about gets the trip, but again, he's aging. I, I don't fancy either. But if I had to take a bet, season Sizing Europe's double the price. I'd say Sizing Europe. Yeah, and plus Sizing Europe absolutely adores coming over to England. His record is absolutely fantastic. Um, Tom Wabia is back, <coughs> um, and it's still Wabia. Hasn't changed that yet. Um, his question tonight, do you think the Sprint Sacra injury was as bad as assumed, and how likely will he to uh, be raced at Cheltenham, in our opinion? Um, uh, it's a difficult question to answer. Do we think it's as bad as was assumed? I don't think that we got told about the full extent of it, to be quite honest um, and I'm not sure we will be told about the full extent of it um, but obviously Nicky Henderson's happy with him if he's, if he's galloping at him at home I mean obviously he wouldn't be doing that if there was going to be any risk to the horse whatsoever but I, I do think he will turn up yeah and I hope that he puts on a, a display like uh, last year um, but it's a delicate subject really isn't it it's about our star horse in our sport and then we're saying were we told about every single aspect of his injury? Um, any anything that you guys would like to say on this? Well, I touched on it. Yeah. Um, I don't know how far I want to go <laughs> towards it, but I mean, this is one of the horses of our <coughs> lifetime, and there is no way that Nicky Henderson wouldn't have known there was some sort of problem with his heart because he'd been one of its highly monitored horses you could think of, yeah. and you know there was. A lot of people there at Kempton to check him after the race, and it it just doesn't just doesn't add up as, as a problem. And it was it was and and the fact that he didn't even go, um, he went straight home and then went to Newmarket. I think it was the day after. If he, they didn't know anything beforehand, they would have gone straight there to the vet, veterinary hospital or, or whatever. Because you know this is a horse that's worth a lot of money. On, you know, he's one of the best horses we've ever seen, so he has to be protected, and there's no way they wouldn't have known anything about him before. I'd like to throw in as well that I was at Kempton that day, and um, as soon as he got pulled up, or well, after the race had finished, I sprinted over to the where he was going to be unsaddled, and Barry Garrity was thankfully walking him back very slowly. But Barry Garrity got off of him straight away and said, Ah, oh, he's got an irregular heartbeat. Like, you're a good jockey. You're not Jesus. <laughs> yeah. There's no way that you can diagnose that by riding a horse. I mean, it it just doesn't add up to me in my case. But we could talk about that all day. Yeah. Uh, and I think we should have been told more than we were, though. It's like, yeah. um, it's like Sir Chris Hoy saying, "Oh, I've got an injury, but I'm not telling you what it is." Kind of. Yeah. Uh, it, 
it's just a bit, it's very vague, and I think pe the the media should have not the it's not the media's fault. You know, they can only go so far. But um, we should have been told a bit more about it. Especially not that I'm the betting public. I don't think, but people who are the betting public, yeah. they kind of want to know more than than what what we have been told. Well, it's, it, it, it is Chris Hoy, like Michael said, Chris Hoy run, uh, being in the Olympics and going in the team pursuit and then saying, you know, oh, I've, I'm, I'm not very well at the moment or something like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> As, I, I'd, also, I'd also like to mention when I was over by where they were unsettling to Prince Sacra, I got over there and there were a few respected journalists from big companies uh, or big industries um, and they were being told to go away. Which by then is the staff, which doesn't add up to me whatsoever. I don't see why you would do that if you didn't. Well, I'm not going to say didn't know something in advance, but yeah, it, it, nothing added up to me in that, and it was all a massive, just a horrible situation. But moving on, uh, if the ground's good, will he cycle and run? And more importantly, will he win? Um, yes, he'll probably run. No, I don't think he'll win. Um, as we touched on earlier, staying uh, power may not be his forte. Um, Price tales. A question that I, I was actually really, really looking forward to talking about. Um, first lieutenant and Bailey Green are obviously from the same, uh, the same yard in Mouse Morris. Will they both run in the same race? I don't think they will, which is why I think I want first lieutenant to go to the uh, Gold Cup mostly. But um, I do think it's intriguing. I don't think. Well, out of them two in the Ryanair, I know what Callum's going to say. What would you rather take, Michael? Uh. I think I would rather take first lieutenant, to be honest, considering the form. I think, yeah, first lieutenant over Bailey Green. Sorry, sorry, Luke. Better be. <laughs> it's just another one that I'll throw in your face when he wins. Uh, <laughs> um, Callum. Um, I still. Oh, which, which one's Bailey Green? Oh yeah, the one that was behind Simon's thing. That's the one. Which one, <laughs> Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> He's that 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 Green. That sums it up really. I just I don't think he's good enough. He's a probably one five five rated horse at best, and yeah, he's, he shouldn't be good enough. You are gonna be proved wrong. Oh, I was joking. I'm joking. You better be, <laughs> especially if Magnifique wins. Oh. Yeah. Um, we love tips, also known as Connor. Uh, Dinas seems to be the forgotten horse of Ryanair. Not anymore. He's not. <laughs> <laughs> he's now price wise. <laughs> Um, he should go well. Sprinter Sack returns up. We've got a show in the um, Champion Chase. Um, and obviously with the news about Philip Fenton tonight, prior to the news tonight regarding uh, Philip Fenton, I was just going to say uh, last installment for the Ryanair with Cube, I'd like to go for the Gold Cup. You can see last installment bossing it from the front, the fluent jumping in Ryanair. One thing I say about last installment in the Ryanair is they're not, they wouldn't bring him over if the ground did dry up. And Mick Fitzgerald was at the race saying today that Chelton dries in three days. Mm. So, whereas now, I can't see rain ever ending, ever. I don't remember what sun looks like. But if it does dry that quickly, which it has done in the past, then we could be looking at good, soft, good ground, which wouldn't really suit last installment. They probably wouldn't risk him because of, the, because of his legs. Um, but if he turns up, he's got to have a good chance. Um, you guys in last installment in the Rhino? Um, uh, going back to the ground, I, I think some, uh, somebody put 2007, the ground was heavy for the weekend before Cheltenham, and it went off soft uh, for the Supreme, and by the end of the week it was good ground, so that says it all really how quickly it dries out. Um, last instalment, I, I think he's a very, very good horse, and he's very impressive when he beat Tidal Bay. Um, I don't see why they won't go for the Gold Cup, though, to be honest. Yeah, that's what I'd be going for. That would be the worry for first... That would be the worry for first lieutenant because certainly Champ obviously went in the uh, big gold cup last year, which meant first left first lieutenant. I said lieutenant. I'm um, going on the right now, so that could be if last installment goes for the gold cup, the, uh, the first lieutenant may go for the Ryanair again. Yeah, that's a fair point. Well, yeah, that's what I'm hoping doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> like, so I wouldn't mind if last installment didn't turn up. Um, I'm hoping it all plays out well and I get a run for my money. If not, then I'm just another person that's fallen victim to the Ryanair anti post. Um, Steve Phipps, what's happened to Captain Conan? If right, he'd be a big player in a champion chase. He's already beat, but yeah, very good point. He's already beat the side of Grigio over two miles of Cheltenham. But I, I don't think we should forget that was that side of, Grigio, uh, side of Grigio's chase debut or second chase? 
Uh, it might be the second one. I think it's Chase debut was at Kempton. Um, but as a novice, Captain Conan did beat Sider Grushi, which, again, it begs the question, does Sider Grushi genuinely want Cheltenham? Does he actually perform to his best around there? I, don't, I think no. Um, have you guys got strong opinions on that? Yeah, it, I, it's worse run by far this season, albeit conceding ten pounds to a fresh kid, Cassidy, um, was at Cheltenham. So he has got good form at Cheltenham, but he's just that bit better at um, at flatter tracks. And I think the main thing is his jumping. His jumping is a, was a lot better at other tracks such as Sandown and, and Ascot, especially Ascot last time. He was electric. If he jumps like that at Cheltenham, there's no reason why he won't handle it. If he jumps like that at Cheltenham, then. Sprinter then Sacker. Sprinter Saka has a serious race on his hands. He, he really has even if back yeah. to his best. But that's an if, big if. The big if, yeah, for sure. Um, Michael. Yeah, I can't really really add on that. I think Saidegrushi is better away from Cheltenham, as some horses are. Um, he was beaten. Has he won? Has he won at Cheltenham before? In fact, he was beaten by Captain Conan, beat by Kid Cassidy. I don't know if he's actually won at Cheltenham. Before. No, I don't think he has actually. No, I don't. I don't think he says he's been beaten both times. Obviously, in really good. Um, Contest at Group Two and agreed to. In fact, sorry, Callum. Um, and uh, <laughs> we've all done it. We've all done it. <laughs> and uh, the other one was a listed contest, I think, actually. Um, the one that Kid Cassidy beat in them. Um, it's a slur. So is it, is it listed the slur? Yeah, it's a slur. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is actually. Um, it's a good race. Yeah. I think it says listed. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I think Sider Grugy is better away from Cheltenham, and I think Sprinter Sacra loves Cheltenham. So we'll see. Or Sprinter Sacra is just a beast, or at least he was a beast. Let's hope he is still a beast. Let's hope he retains the ability. Um, so going from someone that does like Captain Conan, or I think he likes Captain Conan anyway, to someone, uh, Simon Whitaker. If anyone thinks that Captain Conan is each way value in either of these races, they really want their head testing. He's an hashtag overrated horse. Which could potentially be a little bit harsh on him, but very harsh. Yeah, I think I think Cal technically Cal what? Apart. he's won four or five Grade Ones. Technically, I know pretty weak ones, but he's still won plenty of Grade Ones. Yeah. He's not an over. He's not an overrated. I, I can understand where he's coming from um, as such because he's an absolute beast of a horse, and he does seem a little bit tripless. Um, I'm not sure what his best trip is actually. Um, I don't think it does anyone... look like he's going to get further, uh, but two miles at the moment is still the trip that he's that he's shown his best at. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I've always been a big fan of him. He also ran in the Tolworth one when we ran in, uh, and I fell in love with him then. So, he's he's a, he's a lovely horse. He scared the hell out of me that day. He's absolutely. Mad. Yeah. I turned around at the at the paddock or uh, parade ring, and his head was sort of lobbing over the the rail, and I was. 15, 16, I turned around, his head was like here, like looking up to his massive pre ah! So, uh, yeah, he went into my notebook after that one, after making me change my pants. Um, Arvika Ligionier is uh, well, asked by The Real Duck, or I believe his name is Will Duckworth. Um, Arvika Ligionier, what race do you think he will go for, and uh, if he goes for Rhino, what kind of chances would he have? Um, I can't forgive him for what he did in the Arkle. Like, that day was just... It, it it just lasts in your mind where he jumped out to the right every single fence up the back straight and then in the end completely lost his chance. In a race like the Ryanair or the Champion Chase, of course, if you do that, then you've pretty much given away your chance of winning completely, giving horses that good, that much ground at each fence. Um, but could either of you guys fancy RV Collision now or not? No, I've like I said, uh, I I just think he's a horse that needs a lot of his own way. I, th I don't think he likes the, the hustle and bustle of what Cheltenham brings, uh, and he's better right-handed. Um, he goes all right left-handed. He's won at Leopardstown before, but um, and he's run okay at Leopardstown in decent company. But um, he's just a horse. I just think he's quite soft, and definitely definitely not backing at Cheltenham. No way. No. I agree, completely agree with that. And Michael's nod of approval tells me to move on to the next question. Um, Cliff Henry is going to touch. There's a lot of questions tonight, guys. Thank you very much for your interaction with us. Um, we very much appreciate it. Cliff Henry has said, uh, your thoughts on Dinas running in the Ryanair, or will they try the Gold Cup? We we've touched on Dinas, but we didn't actually say if we think he would go for the Gold Cup, which obviously they've tried three miles. Um, if, you were own, if you were own Dinas, we wish, would you be any way tempted to go for the Gold Cup? 
No. Well, yeah, for the money. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't because he's got no chance in the Gold Cup and he's got more of a chance in the Ryanair. That's just my point of view. Up. I'm not... Yeah, yeah, I'd rather have a Cheltenham winner than a horse that just runs in a Gold Cup. Yeah. Cute guy. <laughs> I E Q Um Lee Armstrong champion court in the Ryanair each way and something to sneak third in the champion at big price. We haven't got something. We tried earlier and I can't find one. Um, champion court in the Ryanair though, I, I, I think for this class of race, I think he just falls a little bit short of it. I think he proved that last year, and I think, what was he, fourth or fifth behind Q card? Um, on his best form, he'd be in with an each way squeak, but I don't think I'd find him winning this race uh, too much. And I, I'm a big fan of the horse as well, so it's uh, strange of me to say that. Um, could either of you guys see him figure it at all? No. No, no. Cool. It's just, I, it's just the, bur- the bubbles burst a bit, I think, a bit with him. He's obviously lost that really good Cheltenham record, and he's just been found out. He doesn't stay three miles. Yeah. He should run in the Ryanair. But he's got place, play, a place at best. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, or save him for entry and go for the Melling or whatever the two and a half one is. Um, Lee Armstrong. Ah, there we go. The each way selection for the champion chase is Summersby. Good luck with that. Um, I I, uh, I can't forgive Summersby after the Ryanair the other year. I thought it was a certainty. In um, he's got a chance, but I, I wouldn't be putting a lot of money on him to be honest um, and the final question that I can see at the moment uh, when we're discussing the champion chase which we've done so I forgot about that thank you uh, thoughts on Alderwood and each way bet we, we touched on Alderwood um, 16 to 1 I definitely wouldn't be back to that. but um, personally not for me Callum made a, a case for him but I don't think it was... Yeah, I said, I said if you really wanted to bet now, then he'd be the one I'd back at 20s, but uh, I, I you, don't think he's good enough. He's something up for me. Because he will run. He will run. It's he a definite run. he will run. That's, uh, that, yeah, that's fair enough. Um, three more questions, and then, then you can go back to doing whatever you're doing tonight, I promise. Um, Matthew Kirby, it. Hinterland in the Champions <laughs> Chase. Um you have to respect what Hinterland's done this year. I think he's much excelled what anyone thought he was going to do this season. Um, but surely you run in your... Yeah. Maybe if maybe if Sprinter's yeah. turn up, you'd run him in a champion chase, but surely you'd go for your like, There's no way around it for me. I, I like Hinterland. I've, I've always liked him, and he's best fresh, but he will, he'll almost certainly go for the Arkle, Um which... Ironically, I give him a good chance, in, a really good chance. Yeah, so. yeah fair enough. Um, Alex Stephen, I take your point and did consider that, but giving a tip and having a bet aren't the same at the prices on balance. Bet OC. What's bet OC? OC. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do understand that giving a tip and having a bet aren't the same thing. I have backed Bailey Green for the Ryanair. Um, but. Oh, no, wait, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, that's in reply to a, a, a different thing. Uh, I, I tweeted Alex Stephen the other day. Oh, I've had a shock here. <laughs> that's a, that's the thing for a completely different time. Now I understand. Uh, it's late. It's late. Um, okay, one final question then. Great discussion on the sac- on the sprint sacra scenario. Can side agree to win a champion? Whether sprint sacra turns up? Um, I think we hit the nail on the head earlier. If he's in his Ascot form, then he'll be hard to beat, even with Sprinter Sacra in the field. But Cheltenham form is a big worry. Uh, and you guys agree with me on that. So that appears to be Cheltenham preview number two done. Thank you so much for all the questions. <laughs> um, we had much more than we've ever had before. Um, and thank you very much for watching. If you liked our show, give it a thumbs up. If you hated our show, give it a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to our channel around here somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where the button is. I should probably check that out sometime. Um, but when, if you do subscribe, then on your YouTube feed, it will tell you when we put new videos up and you'll be able to watch them like that. Um, from everyone here that isn't Adam, because Adam didn't turn up tonight, uh, we all wish you a good night. And Callum, are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Take note, Michael. This is how you do it. <laughs> Thank you to everyone for watching and from everyone here on the other hoof. Goodbye. Bye.